So yeah, it's, this is terrifying, exciting, and exposing. I feel quite exposed by it all. So some time ago I made this pink card when it was last summer. With plain sleeves and a shawl collar. It was just a sample and as you can see the joining wasn't very good. And I knitted it from the bottom upwards. So um in the past month or so I've been working on this particular sample of a similar cardigan but with more of a cropped um, version and different stitching because the stitching I used was from a jumper pattern I can still use the same sort of um, stitching patterns but it was a vintage jumper pattern I used it from so I thought I'd do something different and knowing how um, difficult it is to make um, patterns up write them down I thought I would keep it to a simple pattern design and incorporate the shawl collar again 
but this time the shawl collar let me bring it down a little bit The shawl collar is quite wide at the top and it's knitted from the top downwards so there is no visible join to the shawl collar although there is a join but it's the way you've knitted it you don't see it and there's no seam you increase as you go down towards the button band and it's got some pretty stitching at the moment i'm sort of still thinking it through so on this side i've got a rather large um balloon sleeve which i've finished there but what i will do is is get some dpn's and finish that off with a garter stitch border now i'm saying that i don't know whether i'll do it side to side so that it's like an elasticated wrist or just carry on down using dpn's we'll see that's in my thought process i've started the other side but obviously got so far and that's all I've got left, so I might need another ball yet. So, yeah, let me just show you the back. I like the pattern. The pattern is simple, but it creates a lovely, um, shall we say, well, obviously it's lacy, but it, it, it creates a lovely texture. So it can be a summer cardigan because obviously it's lacy. If you didn't want to do a summer cardigan, you could do just a plain one. I've written all the stitch work down for the front pieces and the back pieces and how the collar fits into that. And then um, when you get to joining the cardigan together at this point, under the sleeves i've got to that point in writing it down the rest of it i can write down when i've finished it basically the sleeves to get the balloon sleeve i've obviously had to do some shaping so that i know how to do because i've put the shaping into the pattern um so that you can't see that i've done any shaping that I quite like. That's what I'm trying to achieve in most of my designs. Particularly this design is the same. It has increases in the pattern. So you don't see the increases. The edging for this hem is, is quite simple. And adds a little flourish to it. You don't even have to leave your needle to to do this. It all stays on one needle and you knit, knit it with a circular needle. there it's me again and i'm back on my sofa well it's been a while hasn't it and i'm really sorry about last week for a couple of weeks malk and i have been quite poorly with um something that's just hit our chests and um last week i was in the middle of coughing every word so it was better just to leave me from talking 
to you because <laughs> you wouldn't have um well i couldn't have talked for too long anyway um so for about 10 days i never did any knitting whatsoever I've got my work knits, as you well know, and I've also got my own designs that I do, and I did neither. It was only until the weekend, that last weekend, last Saturday, that I've decided to cast on something of my own just to get me back into the rhythm of knitting. Um, to not knit at all is not me, as you well know. When I'm, I'm finding this now, if I'm poorly, and when I'm getting poorly now, it's just hitting my chest. And for some reason, I just don't knit, don't want to knit, just don't feel well enough to knit. I find that these things just take it out of me. I'm just exhausted from them. So, last weekend, I decided to try something fairly simple in the sense that I'd like to try and design a top down, not a circular yoke this time. Oh, and the other thing as well is, is I've put weight on. So <laughs> this one is not, is a little, um, shall we say, tighter on me now. So, and there's no, um, no ease in it, no, Neg uh, no positive ease in it. Um, it's knitted to the to your size, chest wise. So um, if you want something with a positive ease in it, it's best to go up a size. So I think I'm probably going to have to do that from now on. I'm going, I'm, I'm exploding, <laughs> and that's probably all to do with not being well either as well. You know, these kind of things inflame you, don't they? Anyway. So um, I decided to start on something from the top down, but this time with the raglan. But I wanted to do a compound raglan. Um, I'd heard about these compound raglans on, on some of these podcasts that people have been trying of other people's patterns. So I thought, well, I'm going to try that one myself, do it my way. So I, um, as you know, I like to measure my shoulder. So I usually have about three and a half inches there in that area from sort of, that's the end, the knobbly bit of your shoulder to the neckline there where the collarbone is. It's about three and a half inches. So I did um, a fast increase to the three and a half inch and then I slowed it down and then just as I was getting to the armhole split I speeded up again and then I added some stitches for the underarm and it actually kind of sort of reminds me of the old-fashioned fitted sleeve to a degree. I've always done raglan sleeves and it's just been the normal straight up down ones. And yeah, they they fit okay on me because I've got quite an even front and back. So, um, luckily. So doing a compound one wasn't really that necessary for me. But I thought I wanted to try it. Let me just see. Yeah, so it's... And I've shortened the... Normally when I do um, a circular yoke, it goes down to about ten and a half inches before I split. With this, I've probably done about nine and a half before I split. So, um, this is where we are at the moment. So that's the compound raglan bit at the top. And then this little curly hem, I'll come in a bit closer, is a cat's paw lace pattern. And it's 
cinches in the waist. It's great. I remembered that I think my grandmother, I think it was my grandmother, knit my mum a cardigan with that edging. But it wasn't cinched in. It was quite boxy. So what I think she must have done was had more stitches on the bottom and then decreased so that she had less stocking stitch stitches. And then um, I think she did a, a, raglan, a raglan for the top and she made a cardigan for mum in a lovely yellow gold. But what always fascinated me was this cat's paw hem. Well, luckily I found it because I knew I'd seen it somewhere and I've, I found it in my Knitting and Crochet Stitches book, the ultimate source book. And so it's also called Crowns of Glory. So I decided I would add that to the bottom. I was splitting for the sleeves and I used a bit of pink thread, magenta it is, and I thought, oh, I quite like that. That's quite nice. So I cast off in the pink thread. And then therefore I thought to myself, oh, well, if I'm going to do that, I'll do myself a little frilly collar. It's going to have to be pressed, press this a little bit. It might even get a little bit of um, shirring elastic just to cinch it slightly in. But I quite liked this kind of frilly collar. And I crocheted an edge and then picked up the stitches from the edge to knit the collar, well, the frill. So now I'm onto the the long sleeve, and what I've done is is I've belled it. I've made a bell shape out of it. What I found it what I found difficult was I was knitting on the wrong the wrong circular needle. It wasn't short enough. <laughs> So I was getting annoyed with myself because in the end I went on my DPNs. It was easier because you could tell I've been on my DPNs because there's a line down there. And um, now I've, so I belled it out a bit to give myself some more stitches. But I quite like that. I've got a bell sleeve to it. It's a cropped top with a long belled sleeve. So, again, I'm finishing it off in this cat's paw um, lace pattern. Now, once I've done this, I'm going to write this one up, I've decided. I've also got um, a top that my grandma knitted for my mum with some crochet sleeves. That one I want to write up as well. But I'm giving myself a little break from writing up because this this particular top has taken it out of me as my very first um, attempt at writing a pattern. But I do have um, the Evie sweater to write up. That is um, a plain, simple circular yoke pattern. And um, so I've got that one to write up. And I've also got a pattern from my secret collection to write up. So writing up patterns is um, going to be my next, mostly my next project. I've got work knits on, so I have to concentrate on those at the moment. They're the kind of knits I can't talk about because I do them for somebody else. So I have that to do.
And I've also got another job that um, requires me to do some data data entry. Now, as you know, I work from home, so this is all great. I work for myself, so it's all very well writing patterns, but that it doesn't at the moment. It doesn't earn me anything, <laughs> and I need to earn some money. Things are expensive. Don't let anybody tell you they're not, because they are. Olive oil has doubled in price. I used to get an organic Spanish olive oil from Tesco. Extra virgin. Used to be about £3 odd. It's now, for 500 millilitres, it's now over seven quid. I like... I I use olive oil because me and olive oil seem to work well together. It's um you know it's good for me. So I use olive oil. I have done for years. Um I cook with it, I drizzle it, whatever. But it's so expensive. But I think to myself, look, you need it, so get it. Anyway, I'm, I've been looking around and I've found some cheaper ones, but I was, I liked that one. I liked that one particularly because it, as, as I say, it was organic for a start off, which is, um, which I would say is a lot better. But the other thing you need to know about olive oil is, is when it was harvested, better to be harvested in November. And then to be, shall we say, made into oil straight away you know what i mean oh i've taken off this longer one this longer one wasn't good for the size of sleeve i was doing i'm on to a smaller one now that's better oops yeah that's much better <laughs> The thing with this pattern is, is it decreases and then you increase it again. Right, I've started a different row. Two, four, six. Um. Yep. Did I decrease there? Yeah, two, four. Five, six, seven. That's what I'm up to now. So now I've just, I've made the hole for the cat's paw and now I'm just increasing on that, um, increasing to go back to the original set of stitches. So, so that's why it sort of cinches in because it goes smaller and then up again in stitches that is so yeah so i've had um a couple of shall we say rubbish weeks with my health so um i've got to get back into the swing of working again I've got the pattern now ready for test knitting. Filming this Friday morning and it's the 7th of June. And I'm hoping to have this video up by 7 o'clock tonight. And by then, so will the pattern be up for testing. So yeah, it's, this is terrifying, exciting and exposing. I feel quite exposed by it all. So, you know, 
So if you can really help me out by either test knitting, test knitting it for me, letting all your friends know that the pattern's coming up soon. It'll be about eight weeks. I want it to, I would love it to correspond with um, something positive to po correspond with um, the memorial of mum's passing, which was the 24th of July. So I'd like something positive for that day if I could. Because she would, she would have been thrilled to bits, thrilled to bits that I've actually even done this. She's been telling me to do this for years. So it's just a little, a little positive um, for me, an achievement for me this year. Um, again, I think she would be thrilled to bits that I'd even managed to do that despite everything. Yeah, into that one. I'd like to do that. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It's, you know, one of those things. But that's my sort of aim. Now, I think that is about eight weeks away. I'm, co I'm conscious. I'm actually very conscious of the fact that um, people need time. I know that. Because, like I say, I work, I'm, I do work knits for people. I would knit for people. So, and they expect, although they like, they don't mind me doing it in my own time, my own time has got to be not months. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and I'm conscious of that. I'm conscious that people have things to do in their lives and knitting is a relaxation. It's not something that needs any pressure on it. So I'm conscious of that. So I don't really want to push the envelope on, on um on the time period, but you know, we can always extend it if we need to type thing. Um, I'm also conscious that people don't want me to choose the yarn for them. Well, would I ever? No. I'm sitting here knitting this on this sample on Starcraft Special DK. I sample it on on acrylic and then at the later stage if I want to knit it in um, a different yarn a more shall we say precious yarn then I will um, I put out a poll on my community YouTube community and asked what wool would you like to see this Knitted in. This is knitted in cotton. I had the woolly knits cotton. And I put two strands together. As you can see, a yellow and a pink. And I also had a one-ply merino, which is tiny. Tiny, absolutely tiny. And I just put that in to give it a little bit more yellow in it. So I knitted that in what I'd got. And I liked it. Um, I'll show you a couple of pictures here of the, the yarns that I've knitted this in and the styles I've knitted it in. So, you know, I'm conscious that people have their own stashes and would like to try it from their own stashes. So I've, I've given you some options to play with if that's what you want, if that's in your stash. If it's not in your stash, I'm not bothered. As long as it kind of is double knitted and worked on a four and a half mil needle, am I giving too much away? 
probably, knowing me. <laughs> and I kind of also need people to test the lace gauge. Now, this is another thing that didn't figure in my mind. I just knit stuff. You know what I mean? Out of my head. And so I never thought about does lace stitch have a gauge? Well, I suppose it does because you've just put a hole in it, haven't you? <laughs> so those are some of the other things to think about. So I'd like people to test the lace, what the gauge is like. Do you have to go down to a smaller needle? Do you, can you stay on the same needle? Um, I've got options in there. Things that I've tried out myself that um, I found worked for me, but are they going to work for somebody else? So there are optional shaping in there and there's optional sleeves in there. I haven't put any sleeves on this one, but I'm going to do another sample myself. Now, the poll for the for what yarn to use on this particular top on the community was drops daisy well i never really thought of that because that's a wool in it it's a merino a non-superwash merino well why not here it's colder up here in orkney so i could get away with that no bother um this it's not bad day at the moment but i'm indoors i don't think i'd wear this out today because it's quite cool and it's wet but if i was on holiday somewhere definitely it's not heavy it's quite drapey and of course it's cotton so mainly cotton with a tiny wee bit of merino in it so yeah when we had a lovely sunny day recently i was walking around town in it uh, with a pair of trousers and a straw hat <laughs> yeah yeah it was a nice day that beautiful day that couple of pictures up there you've probably seen them all then anyway last week was a was a vid video clip fest because I couldn't talk to you, but I wanted to let you know that the test knit was coming up. And I thought, what a week to be ill. Because I would have done the test knit last week. You know, published the test knit last week. Because it was the 1st of June. And that's ideal, you know. But I thought, right, well, I'll do what I can. I'll show you what's show you what i'm inspired by why it's called the Tresness summer tea so if you've not watched any of those do have a look i'm not talking on them they're more sort of background music asmr type um videos because i was lying in bed in my sick bed no not knitting but thinking well, I could do a little video on my iPhone. So on my iPhone, I have all my clips. So I've got hundreds of clips. If it's not photographs, it's little video clips. And so I was able to make up some little um, five minute videos or daily pods as I would call them. So I did about three daily pods and on the, on the Friday, I put them all together with um, some a little bit more information to make a little compilation video. So that was episode 58. So if you want to just look at episode 58, that's fine. That covers the majority of it. So, yeah, it was a weird week last week. <clears throat> but at least I could do that. As you can tell, I'm still not right. Um, next week, I've got to have another eye scan and a possible injection the week after. I'm having to have these every two months now. 
Um, I did miss one month because I had a bad head and it's no good going for an injection when you've got a bad head. Um, so when it came to have my next scan, my eye was, the, the fluid behind my eye had really increased quite a lot. So they gave me an injection. Then they checked me up a month after, the month afterwards, that was May. And was it May? I think it was May. Yeah, I just think I went for a scan in May, early May. Things it's just time's just been flying by, and it was okay, it was really good, it, it stabilized. So, I'm hoping this time next week, when I go for another scan, that it's quite stable. I don't see any difference in my eyesight at the moment, so that's good. So, you know, everything I do, all my knitting patterns now are crucial to be done now while I can see. So, once they're up there, they can sit, and once they're published, they can sit and earn me a few pennies. Because there's going to become a time when I won't be able to do um, do close-up work. Or I get retire, I'm, I'm retired anyway, but when I get my pension... I get, a, I get concessions on a bus now. I could have got on the bus for 50p to go anywhere in, in Scotland. But I forget about that. And I suppose the other thing is, it's such a long journey as well, whatever. But it would be, it's much better than driving yourself. Anyway, I've got to go and have a brew in a minute. I think I've talked long enough. If I've not mentioned anything that you want to know, will you please ask me in the comments? Because I've probably forgotten. I don't want to say too much about the pattern, but um, like I say, that's all going to be on Ravelry if you go and test it for me. So please, 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 please share this video with anyone you think who would be interested in test knitting my Tresnes summer tea or who would actually like the pattern when it's published. Oh, and another thing while I'm thinking about it is what I've come to, to realise is that over the past year or so since I've been doing this, I had about 12, I've had about 1,200 subscribers. But I've never really gone over 857. I'm sort of over that now at the moment. So would you check your subscribe, your subscription? Have you subscribed to me? Um... Or has your subscription been removed? Now, I've heard this from other people that, um, that sometimes their subscribers just go. Not because they're gone, they just go. They're not, they're not subscribed anymore. So if you hit the subscribe button, I'm kicking the camera now. If you hit the subscribe button, don't forget, don't leave it on personalised. Put it up to all notifications, I think it is all. I think it's all. And then we can get this out to as many people as we can. That's been my job for the past 12 months, to get these... To get more knitting patterns out, I need more people to be watching what I do. Because 
then more people will see the patterns and more people will hopefully, if they like them, go and um, find them on Ravelry and buy a pattern. I would love to do free patterns. I'm going to have to do a free pattern every now and again. But the problem is, is when you use tech, a tech editor, you have to pay the tech editor. So there's a cost. I have to buy the wool to make the samples. Um, it doesn't cost me anything to type them up. It costs me time, shall I say, to sit here and talk to you. Um, and it costs, that takes away time from me doing my work knits and my virtual office work. So, yeah, there's a cost in it. There's cost implications. So the more people that I can get to watch these videos, please. And it's not like that I hope... And I know a lot, I get so many lovely comments that say how much they love the videos, but they're not being seen by enough people. And that's what I need. I need you guys to help me to get my patterns out there. Yes. I think that's all I can say on that is I would really appreciate your help on that one. And the more that see me, the more patterns I can produce and can um, put up on Ravelry. And this, I don't know what it is, but when I, when I start a project, it's just in there. It doesn't, I don't sit and I don't sort of, decide what I'm going to do. Very rarely do I do that. Um, I have already done this top in another, um, in my secret project, but I've done that as a kind of chemise on bigger needles and using local wool. So that's going to come up soon. And we're going to have a little trip to Westray to film the secret project that I've got. I've already done a lot on. I've still got a cardigan I need to finish for that. But it was on its way. So it's not that it's um, too far behind in getting done. But I think I might be doing that little trip in in. July. July is a busy month. July is the month for the um, special, my special secret project. And also I'm away for a few days in uh, towards the end of July. So yeah, it's going to be a fairly busy month. Uh, the garden is coming along. I will do an update, but uh, not just yet. Um, in about maybe perhaps next week or the week after will I pop up an update on the garden. You'll be surprised at how well it's doing. And I would like to try and get on with a little project I've got for the garden as well. So um, another little timber project. So we'll see. Yeah, so I'm going to go and make myself a brew now. I hope you're all well. Tickety-boo. Keep smiling. Keep knitting. Yeah, so keep knitting and I will see you soon. Yeah, bye now.